and welcome back to the Cherry on Top YouTube channel. I'm Jessica and today I will be showing you how to make a Coptic style book. So this is a book binding technique and it works really great if you're trying to make a journal or I'm using it with scrapbook paper to make a mini album but there are just a lot of different things that you can do with it with this technique. It's really great because the album will lay flat, the pages lay flat, and you can do a lot with it. So let's get started. I wanted this book to have a hard cover. I've seen people use a piece of wood to make a cover and then you drill holes in it or you could even use thicker paper or layer a few pieces together but I am using a piece of chipboard that I am wrapping with some opulent cardstock and I'm wrapping it with opulent cardstock because it's a little thicker than your typical cardstock so that's what I wanted for my cover. I made my chipboard piece the size that I want the book to be and then I cut my cardstock half an inch bigger on each side so I can fold it over and cover it up. When creating books like this, I think using a bone folder or scoring tool like what I'm using is really important and it helps you get your lines a lot crisper. I first went over and uh, just helped get those r lines ready to fold and then you can see I cut off my corners I didn't cut it all the way to the chipboard, but I left a little bit so that the corners would get covered and Now I'm starting to fold over my pieces. I want to make sure that it's nice and crisp edges so I'm using my bone folder and pushing these pages down on all of the sides and now I'm adhering them down using wet glue. I make sure to get some in to the crevice on the edge of the chipboard as well as the main area of the chipboard and then I press it down and hold it until it starts to dry a little bit. And when I am starting to glue a page like this I'll do one side and then do the side across from it. I don't go in a circle because you can get a little bit more of a crooked looking book cover. And as I'm holding this down I'm also curling the very corners of this paper too to go around the chipboard corner and this just has helps it have a little bit of a nicer look. You can see I'm doing it right here where I'm just pushing in that edge a little bit. So then when I go to glue down my next two sides, I can just glue them like I was before and make sure I have a lot of glue. I do use quite a bit of glue when I am creating books and book covers because I don't want anything to lift off of the chipboard and I want to make sure that everything is nice and solid. I don't want so much glue that it is running over the sides uh, because that is too much glue and then you get sticky but I want all of the edges to be glued down and the center glued down so make sure you're using enough glue with these steps. And now that this step is done I cut some pieces that are a little bit smaller than the chipboard so that I can still see that edge of the teal paper on the inside page and I'm gluing this down. Again I'm using enough glue to make sure this adheres completely but not so much that it's a sticky mess. You'll see I'll use the bone folder again here just to make sure that the paper has full contact with the chipboard and there's no bubbles or any missed areas and it is completely adhered down. Now it is time to start measuring out where I want my holes. The cool thing with a Coptic style book binding is that you can have as many or as few holes as you please. I chose to do seven just because that's how this lined up. I did one every inch and then I put them in about a quarter inch. So it was just at the top of where that pattern paper started. I am using a crocodile to punch all of the holes 
and then I am also using some eyelets and the crocodile again to squeeze them into place. I really like the look of adding the eyelets to this step. I think it makes a nicer finished look. The more holes that you do, the more holes that you have to sew through. So keep that in mind. Seven was a little excessive for this size book, but I wanted the odd number and I liked the look of it. So um, I, with this size book, I could even get away with four or five holes. So that's just something to keep in mind. How much sewing do you want to do when you're making the book? My pages in this book are made up of scrapbooking cardstock that I cut down to size, as well as some watercolor paper that I added watercolor and some texture paste to. So I folded them in half and then I stacked them in groups of two. So each of these books has a cardstock page as well as a mixed media watercolor page. So once they were all folded and stacked in the order that I wanted, it's time to line them up. And I lined them up using the holes, the seven holes that I have on my cover. And then I am drawing across all of them so I can see where the hole is using a pencil. And then I'll have to get punching through, through the holes. I'm using an awl. This came with the book binding tool from We Are Memories Keepers, and I use it a lot. I'm not using the actual tool part for this book because I didn't line it up using the tool, I lined it up using my cover, but uh, it is a very useful tool for if you like making books or anything like that because it just makes it a bit quicker and easier. So as I get all of my holes punched, I'm putting them back in their stack. And if you're using plain paper, this doesn't matter as much, but if you're using anything with a printer design, you want to make sure that all of the pages are faced correctly. And I also double check this as I'm sewing each of my pages in. So you'll notice I'll do that throughout the sewing as well. I am using waxed thread to sew this page and you can see how much thread that you're going to use by how many signatures you have. So I am sewing nine individual signatures so I grabbed enough thread for nine widths of my book. I started by adding a double knot around one of the holes at you can either start at the bottom or start at the top i chose to start at the top and then sew into your first signature from there you'll be inside of the book and go out through your very next hole and on the first signature connected to the uh, front side of the book and the last you'll need to pick up the cover as well so I went out the hole I went and picked up the around the eyelet on the cover and then you can go back to the inside of the signature and move to your next hole so here now that I'm on the outside of the book I will use my curved needle to go around the hole in the, out, the cover of the book and then I'll head back into the same hole that I came out of to be back on the inside of the book. You want to make sure each of your stitches is tight before you move on to the next. So here I am back on the outside of the book. I pick up through the hole in the cover and then head back into the same hole that I just was out of on the signature. And the signature is just a stack of pages that I am sewing with. So with this book, like I said, I have nine signatures. So I will be doing this step nine separate times to sew in each signature. Now I'm coming to my last hole, so I still will go out the hole the same way and pick up around the cover, 
but instead of going back into the inside of this signature, I will grab my next signature that I want sewn onto the book. So I'm grabbing my next page, I'm making sure that nothing is upside down, and I will go into this first hole that I have and then go to the inside of this signature. And very similar to how I just did with the first steps, I go back, go to the next hole, go back out, but this time, instead of picking up around the hole of the cover of the book, I'm just getting the last stitch. So I'm wrapping around the previous stitch of the last book, the last signature. And this is what will hold all of the pages together. So each page is connected to the last. In my opinion, I think that if you can, the tighter you can keep your stitching, the better your book will look and the more it'll feel held together. Uh, if your stitches are a little loose and wiggly, uh, your page or your whole book just kind of shifts around a little bit more, and this is because each stitch is held on by the previous. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind as you're moving through this book as well. If you want to watch any part of this video again, you can certainly do that and you can also edit how quickly this video plays as well if you'd like to do it, like work on your book at the same pace as this book. Um, I will also have timestamps in the description below so you can pick which part of the book process that you want to see again. But all of the next signatures, except for the very last signature, is the same steps as this page is. You go out of the signature, you pick up the stitch from the previous signature, and then you go back in to the same hole that you came out of. The only difference with the last page is that you sew your cover on at the same time as you're sewing in your last signature. I'll show how to attach this next page at the beginning here, and then I'll skip ahead until I get to sewing my last signature. So you can see I've got my stack here, and I have one more signature to sew on, and as well as my back cover. My first step is I'm going to put this my needle through the hole of my back cover and then I'll go to the inside of my last signature. If you're having trouble holding all of this, grab a paper clip or something similar and have that help you hold your last signature uh, to your back cover. So I went back out of my last hole, I'll pick up the previous stitch of the signature and then before I go back in the hole, I make sure to go through the hole on the cover. Once I have that done, I can go back in to the inside of the book and move to the next hole. This last page is definitely the trickiest um, just because you're holding the cover on with the rest of the book as well. Uh, so just take your time and really spend extra time making sure that everything is nice and tight and you don't have a lot of loose thread. So here I am on the outside of the book. I am picking up the previous stitch and then going through the hole in the cover and I'll do that all before I head back into the same hole that I came out of on my Pre on my signature that I'm currently sewing in. Once you get started, you just do the same thing over and over again. So like anything, practice makes perfect. You might see that while you're working on your first book, your last pages look a lot better than your first ones and they look tighter and neater. If that's the case, just unsew it, just cut out all of the thread and just re-sew your book up. 
For me, I would say this style book binding is in like the medium difficulty, but it is really cool for a lot of reasons. And I think once you get started and you can actually start using the book, you'll see all of the great ways that it works so wonderfully. So here is the last stitch. Again, I'm going to the outside of the book, picking up the previous signature stitch, as well as the hole in the cover. And then I will go back into the inside of that signature, and here I will tie a double knot. Again, you want to make sure everything is nice and tight before you knot it off but then you give it a knot. I like to take this extra string and just glue it down. That's also what I'm going to do with that piece of string that I started with and the outside of the book. I'll just use my needle to thread it back through and then I'll use my wet glue to glue it down. You could also leave it out. Um, it, it doesn't do any harm or anything to leave it out or you could use it to hold a charm or something. I have a lot of ideas for what I want to do with this book so I will likely be working in it with a few more videos. But that is it for this video. Here is a look at it after I did some embellishing to the cover. I haven't done anything to the inside pages yet and I'll leave that for another video. So thanks for watching and I hope this helps.